Okay, my YouTube people. The next thing I'm going to do on this Evo motor is install the pistons and cylinders. But there's a lot of checks that have to be done before that can happen. And they're very critical if you want a really good running motorcycle and a really strong motorcycle. I can't stress enough about what I'm about to do of how important it is to do. Most people don't do any of this. As always, I put the part numbers in the description. I'm going to be using Keith Black Pistons. The part number for these pistons is KB305.005. The 005 means that they're five thousandths over bore. These pistons are also stamped .005. They call out the intake. And this one has an R and an, this one has an F. So this is the front, the intake, the intake, and the rear. You have to put these pistons in the right spot. They have this squish area and a pop-up. And if you don't get them in the right spot, they will hit the heads. You can see these were both mic. They mic'd at 3.5015 inches. So the cylinders were sized appropriately. Not sure how good the finish hone shows up. These cylinders are in excellent condition. They were stock bore when I took them off. And I had John Cycle take care of the machine work in the cylinders. You can always look him up. He's in Chester, Pennsylvania and he does some of the best work around. These pistons are hyper eutectic cast pistons. They have the coating on them and they are 9.6 to 1 compression. Normally I run Weissco's but they're getting really hard to get and I don't think Weissco is going to be making Evo pistons any longer and I couldn't get them in the size I needed. I would have had to bore out the 20 thousandths to get a set of 10 to 1 Weissco's. These were a good deal less expensive. They're a nice piston for the price. I'm going to install the piston on the connecting rod without rings and without wrist pin clips. I just want to depth mic the piston. Okay, this next part is where I nerd out a little bit, but this part is extremely important when you're building an engine. Some people can't figure out why they have the exact same combination as someone else, yet someone else's motor is so much faster than theirs. When people talk about you have to pay very close attention to the details, this is one of those details that makes a big difference. All this information I got out of the Big Twin High Performance Guide and I swear by this book. I built another Evo motor that's very similar to this motor. It's the same EV27 cam, single fire ignition. The big difference in that motor is it has 10.5 to 1 Weissco pistons, where this one is 9.6 to 1. So that is a big difference in compression, and compression makes horsepower. There's no two ways about it. That motor makes a lot of horsepower. The three things that affect horsepower the most are bore, stroke, and compression. Paying attention to these details is free horsepower. You want to spend a ton of money and buy a stroker kit for the bottom end and big bore kit for the top end, that's great, but I'll take the free horsepower and not have to make big alterations in my motor like that. The big thing with any combustion chamber is you want it very efficient. And one of the ways to get it really efficient is to have a lot of turbulence in the combustion chamber. So I'm not going to get into a whole ton of the technical stuff that's in this book. I recommend that you buy it. But the big thing to take away is the Evolution Squish Area. It's got a D-shaped chamber in the head, as you can see in the head next to me. You want that squish area to be 25 thousandths to 40 thousandths of an inch clearance. Anything larger diminishes the squish area to where it becomes ineffective. 25 is too close and you end up getting carbon on the dome of the piston, you'll have contact. In this book, they'll tell you it's better to go with a minimum of 30 thousandths clearance on a street engine. This is how you figure this out. Here's the combustion chamber and they talk about right here this flat spot that's flush with the head gasket surface as the squish area. When the piston comes up, you want it 30 to 40 thousandths away from this area. And this is how you figure this out. You have your engine block, and it's real important on your engine block that where the two case halves meet, this surface has to be very flat because the cylinder mounts there. You'll have leaks right here forever if the deck surface isn't flat. They call that the engine deck surface. Then you have your cylinder. And this is where your base gasket goes right here. This cylinder also has to be flat. And don't forget, you have a spagot that sticks out of here that goes into the engine block. Next thing you have is your cylinder. You have your cylinder deck surface, which is across the top. Again, that needs to be flat. They also need to be 90 degrees to the cylinder. These can both be flat and not either one of them be 90 degrees to the cylinder. So you want to make sure you use a reputable shop that checks both of these surfaces and make sure that when they bore it, they bore it square to these surfaces. 
This is where your head gasket goes, in between the cylinder and the head. On this engine, the piston sticks out, and it sticks out five thousandths. That area where the head gasket goes, right here up against the head, you need the piston to be 30 to 40 thousandths away from that area. In this James gasket set that I'm using, the head gasket is a 45 thousandths thick head gasket, which I already know that's too much. The base gasket, part number JGI-16777-94, is a 20,000 squish base gasket. So there you go, I have 20,000 thick base gasket, and that's after it's crushed. So on this engine, I already know that the piston sticks out 5 thousandths of an inch. With these numbers that I already have, let's see what the ideal head gasket would be. I would suggest that when you're figuring out the squish area to shoot in the middle of the range. The range is 30 to 40 thousandths. You want to shoot for a squish of 35 thousandths of an inch. But the way I do it is, I know my base gasket size of 20 thousand, And then my piston is always going to be a negative number because it's sticking out of the cylinder. If it was down in the cylinder, then it's a positive number. I know my piston's 5 thousandths out and I have to subtract that. So I say minus 0 0.005. That gets me at 15 thousandths. Now I want to be at 35 thousandths. So to figure out the head gasket I need, I take 35 thousandths and I subtract that 15 thousandths and I get 20 thousandths. I know the head gasket I need needs to be 20 thousandths. Now let's try the same formula if the piston were five thousandths down into the bore. I take my 20 thousandths. Now I have to add that five thousandths. I come up with 25 thousandths. If I want to be 35 thousandths away, I have to subtract that. I would need a 10 thousandths thick head gasket. So at that point, you have to go with a thinner base gasket. James makes both head gaskets and base gaskets different thicknesses. And when they talk about the thickness, that's the crush thickness. What I found to get for mine to get it right is I already have the 20 thousandths thick base gasket. So I am looking to get a head gasket that works with that. And that's going to be a 20 thousandths thick head gasket. Now, James doesn't make it, but Kometics does. So I'm going to get that Kometics gasket. Kometics makes a whole ton of gaskets in different thicknesses. You have to call Kometics to get the part number for the gasket you're looking for. And if you call their tech line, they answer right away and give you that information. James makes all different thickness base gaskets. So I'm going to mix and match gaskets to get it where I want it. This kit has the 45 thousandths thick head gaskets that I won't be using. That's how you get the squish area right. The next part of this video is to figure out whether your piston's sticking up or it's down in the cylinder, and this is how you do that. The first thing I do when I'm figuring out these measurements, I take my piston, put it on the rod with the wrist pin. You take your piston, put the intake towards the intake manifold, which is in the center, and that's always going to be the bigger valve if it's not marked. Then you start your wrist pin in, bring it onto the rod. Always stick my finger in the other side so I can get a gauge on where it is. And then the wrist pin just slides right in. Now I take the cylinder and put it on. You don't need rings on the piston to do this part. And then it just slides right on. Next, I get a half inch drive socket and the shorter head bolt. And I just put it on like this. I do it the same over here. Now I just take and snug them like this. Now I eyeball top dead center. And you can eyeball it along with having your finger here. And you can feel right where it hits top dead center. Also, nine times out of 10, once you're top dead center, you can't push the piston into the bore. Like if you're here, you can push it down real easy when there's no rings or no valve terrain. Plus, you can almost feel it on the crankshaft, and that's top dead center. Now to decide whether your piston's out of the cylinder or not, you can just feel across it, and I can feel that the piston's sitting slightly higher than the top of the cylinder. Now you get a straight edge, and you want to check it right at the wrist pin, because the piston can rock. You can see it's rocking there, but at the wrist pin, it doesn't move. So you just take a straight edge, take it across here the best you can, and then put a feeler gauge under it. So the first place I'm going to check it, right here, you, and you hold it onto the piston, and then you come under the straight edge, and that's five thousandths right there. You can see it slips in and out. That's six, and six is tight there. It's got a lot of drag. 
So I'll go to five now. And five is right, right where it's supposed to be. So the piston's sticking five thousandths out of the cylinder. Next, I'll set up my magnetic base dial indicator and dial indicate top dead center, and then I'll check it with a depth mic. It's important when you're checking this to check it right at the wrist pin right here. I'm going to show you is the real technical way to do it. Now, don't judge me because I got washers and a socket to hold down the metal plate for the magnetic base that holds the dial indicator. My father was a machinist and I inherited his tools and this is what it is and the best way I could set it up. With that being said, you find top dead center of the piston and once you find top dead center right there, you set your dial indicator face to zero and then you double check it. And there's top dead center right there. Next thing you do is you take this depth mic and the way it works is this comes out and it has an exact increment of how much it's out. Right there, zero, you have one and you have zero. That means that's sticking out a tenth of an inch. So you bring this less than zero and you, and you can see there that the mic is recessed. And you get on this flat part of the piston right here and you measure the height of the piston to the height of the deck surface. You make sure these surfaces have to be clean with nothing on them. And with this, you set this part of the mic on the piston and then the depth part goes on the cylinder because the piston is higher than the deck of the cylinder. When you're doing this, it's important that you stay at top dead center. And if the needle moves away from zero, then you know you've moved the piston down in. But you can push on this piston pretty hard once you get it at top dead center and it doesn't really move down in the bore. So with it recessed, you get on the flat surface like this and you put a little pressure here and now you turn the depth mic until you feel the slightest bit of resistance. Now you turn it down and right there it stops. And when I check it, I come to five thousandths. This piston is sticking five thousandths up past this deck surface of the cylinder. So that's how you set the squish area for maximum combustion chamber efficiency. This works on an Evo, it works on a twin cam, and it works on a Milwaukee 8. You can't really do this on a hemispherical piston like the knuckle in the pan and the shovel. Please hit that like button and subscribe. It don't cost you anything and it helps my channel and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.